All right, and here she is. Impreza Sport, it's 2016 CVT. I decided to go with the OEM's Norcus OEM box. There's an epexy air filter in there. And I had to chop this down, take off the, the MAF mount, but I was able to hose the intake tube from the Takeda kit into the factory air box. The inner diameter of this and this are equal. So the performance gain one, I guess, is the um, high flow uh, filter. And then the MAF is put here. And then this is the other uh, efficiency gain, which is um, a smoother pipe. Uh, the one caveat of this is that it would be louder than uh, the stock unit. But the stock unit also had a, um, a baffle catch can here that connected to the breather valve. That's the Crawford. Um, Baja edition. Uh, so usually this line here, the breather valve, would be going straight underneath this intake and then to a tube connected to your intake baffling on the stock OEM uh, box up here in the tube. Um, but now that I have an aftermarket intake, um, it's very easy for a blow by to happen that goes through this breather line. What I've done is I've added a catch can to intercept any blow by when the flow is in a high load or high RPM. The breather valve actually starts pushing air out this way and back into the intake. Under idle conditions um, and just cruising, there's actually a vacuum that gets pulled into the, the engine block. So this is where blow by can happen um mine is a 2016 and uh, a lot of people get their blow by coming through the pcv system here um and then it usually goes directly into the intake here so if you have a direct injection engine that would be more of an issue um at high rpms again um but there is like a vacuum sort of push sort of system happening here as well. Um, although I haven't had any oiling issues on this side, so I'm not that, that worried. What does happen is with the breather valve, if you run the car pretty hot and pretty high, because the air is coming out of here and back into your uh, intake system, it, it's pushing oil and uh, oil vapors through this right before the throttle body and this is the throttle body here this throttle body when it gets you know kind of saturated with oil it can gum up and you'll get like rich codes or just other engine codes regarding like i think mine were like bank sensor rich and i'd have like a rough idle or through a certain rpm range you would just kind of stutter so that's the reason why I added this catch can because I don't want that to happen again. And I want to keep my intake clean, as clean as can be at least. Uh, still maintaining, you know, um, emissions. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a good little engine. Oh, Crawford billet blocks raises the intake runner for a longer length. Uh, the main reason why you want to increase the length of your intake runner is to move your torque range uh, lower or higher. So the shorter they are, usually you have more torque and uh, power in the upper RPM ranges. And a longer intake runner here will now move shift your peak torque um, slightly lower or more in a more reusable range, let's say under 4,000 uh, RPMs. So, so good, really good for highway cruising and stuff like that, but also good for like mid-range pickup. You know, I was thinking maybe I should just go through a, like a full walk around on my car. My car is not nothing to look at. It looks pretty much stock on the outside, except for some wheels and a bit lowered, right? But it's got a couple of um, things. Let's go through them. Uh, for you exterior people, 
Sport Mesh Grill, Plate Delete. I've been pulled over once, but whatever. The fog lights are actually LEDs and with a film overlay. The high beams are yellow Nokia Hyper Yellow H11 halogen bulbs. And for my main lights, I have uh, uh, LEDs, some like bright whites. But I have an inline resistor that you can't really tell it's here, but it's under here. Um, it's under there. Some brow. All right, so wheels are an 17 by 7.5. Rim, they are NKs. They are what they call like flow formed. Um, so they're pretty light and they're pretty durable. They were originally for the Forester or the BRZ. Uh, the tires are Firestone, Firehawk, Indy 500s, uh, 225, 45, 17. Externally, you don't really see that much. I don't really have that much. I have um, a lip here. And this is an all-fit, uh, full-body lip kit. Uh, I just got these recently. These are the OEM front under spoilers. Got a little bit of, um, you know, some vinyl wrap on the bottom rung. These OEM rain wind guards are great. They look perfect. The STI Sport a spoiler. Tail lights are stock. I just put a little bit of yellow tinting over it. I'm in California, by the way. But yeah, that's like the externally, like, you know, if you walk around, you might notice a little something here. I don't know if you can see the color, but uh, the pads and rotors are actually upgraded to uh, a cross track size rotor. It uses a larger brake caliper bracket um, to accommodate for the larger diameter. So it's a good, easy brake upgrade. Pads, I'm using a Project Mew B Specs. It's like a kind of like a high performance, high heat pad with very similar to OEM sound and braking capabilities. Higher performance for the heat. Uh, I'm still using rubber lines, but I have upgraded uh, my, my fluid to DOT4. I did a, a, a flush a while ago before I did the brake. But dot four definitely is gonna be good. Change your brake fluid, everyone. <clears throat> so I guess you can tell I have a little bit of suspension here. Um, these are Fortune Auto 500 coilovers, and uh, that's the STI flexible strut bar. Coilovers are great. They have um, some rebound adjustments here. They have uh, aluminum top hats with camber plates. Battery, I went with an AGM type battery, so you can put it, you know, in any direction and um, it's just more reliable than the stock um, factory battery. Pitch stop, now that you can see it, it's under there. I like purple anodized because purple is my favorite color. I'll have a master cylinder brace from Torque Solutions, right? Um, and also a Torque Solutions steering damper lockdown that's in that blob there somewhere. So it makes your steering a little bit more, uh, have better feedback. Underneath the car, there is a, um, right around here, there's a transmission mount. It's a bushing, it's a polyurethane bushing that supports the transmission. You got the drive shaft that comes back. I have diff bushings in there by Perrin. Uh, stock rear arms right now. So we have um, some slight upgrades. Like I said before, we had the um, coilovers here. We have the Perrin diff lockdown. Uh, we have a nameless exhaust. This is the newer five inch exhaust because the older one I also have has a larger muffler tip. I was reading that the muffler tip, if it becomes larger than the 
current diameter of the tubing, you actually get more exhaust noise, even though it's still a five inch muffler. But interesting to note, I have two of these things, right? One is the original version, and then this is this one. This one actually has two and a quarter inch piping all the way through to right to the end. My other nameless five inch axle back with the um, larger muffler tip is louder, but the tubing all the way up to here is actually only two inch. The cat back tubing, the, this tubing here, uh, I measured it to be, I think it's two inch. So there are possible performance benefits for increasing that pipe there, but most of the restriction is going to be at the front. Or so I've read. I have a white line, 22 millimeter adjustable rear sway bar, and uh, their extra bracing for the um, sway bar brackets. In the front, actually, I forgot to mention, I have a 24 millimeter OEM cross trick front sway bar, standard end links. For those people that have adjustable or you know aftermarket end links do you find that you need them because you know these end links the stock end links here other than that they're a little bit of a pain to put in uh they, they hold up just fine i don't feel any anything but that's my rear suspension and this has been this part of the car has been really fun like coilovers sway bars uh some of these bushings uh and then obviously the exhaust, but um, the handling aspect of these things have really made the car quite unique in my in my mind. Um, even though they're such simple parts, they, they transform the suspension of the car and the handling. So tires, wheels, and then these this rear suspension is an easy way to get some good handles. So that is it. That's my um that's my build. So far, as of 2021, uh, hope you like it. The Subaru that could. Yep. There she is.